I invite you to stand as we receive the family.
you take a seat. And the rest of you too, you might as well go sit. Yeah. Kind of feels like we're all family here, I think. Well, good afternoon, everyone, to those of you who are here in the room, and I think the many more that are, are joining us live online or, or maybe later. Uh, welcome here. Uh, we're here uh, to celebrate the life of a great man, Dean Davidson. And uh, his wife, Leona, very intentionally has called what's happening here a celebration of life. And uh, that's, you know, not been chosen, I think, lightly or carelessly or thoughtlessly or casually. It's because we really, truly believe that there is much to celebrate, not only about the life that Dean lived, but just as much as that, the life that he lives right now. And so today we will celebrate, even as we carry into this space, um, some pain and sadness. Uh, my name is Rusty, and uh, I'm a pastor here at New Life Church, and it's been my privilege to be um, a pastor to Dean and Leona the last almost eight years uh, of his life. Um, although I, I think at times it was unclear who was pastor to who. <laughs> there, uh, boy, I, I often felt like he was a shepherd to me, uh, a, a real blessing. Uh, and I, I think you probably feel the same. You're here because Dean has made some sort of positive impact in your life, uh, whether as, as someone who um, was very fortunate to, to call Dean dad, or grandpa, or brother, or uncle, uh, or maybe you're here because you're a friend who is impacted by him, maybe a, a coworker, a colleague from, from the past, a years at, at various places in ministry, or maybe a fellow bus driver over these final years, here in Stonewall, or maybe you're here because you're one of those students that he brought back and forth to school every day, and he really touched your life. Uh, but whoever you are, you're here because Dean has had a real impact in you, and, and we are just the tip of the iceberg. Uh, there are just many, countless more that he has impacted over the years uh, in his life, and that's just worthy of honor. Um, and so... Um, what we're going to do together is, uh, after I just open this time together in prayer, you're going to hear from some of the family this afternoon. They're going to share some memories. We're going to sing some songs of worship together to God. And then we're also going to, to hear from Him through His Word, words of comfort, uh, encouragement, and hope. So as we begin, I just want to invite you to stand again. And uh, I just want to open this time together with you in prayer, uh, uh, inviting God's comforting presence to be very real to us, and, uh, and then I invite you to stay standing, and uh, Robert is going to lead us in a first song of worship together. Let's pray. God, we invite your presence here, and even as we do so, we know that you are already here. You are close to the brokenhearted. Um, Lord, you are a true comforter and encourager, and we just need that today because we're bringing into this room all of us just a, a kind of a hole in our heart, and for some of us, that hole uh, where, where Dean has dwelt um, just feels really big, really empty right now. And so, God, we just invite you to come um, and to be our comforter and to encourage us and just to um, draw our attention, our eyes, the eyes of our minds and our hearts onto um, the hope that you have for us. Lord, because we believe even as we carry our sadness into this time, Lord. We believe that there is so much reason to be thankful, so many reasons to celebrate, and so many reasons to have hope as we look to the future, for you are our creator and you are our redeemer. And so we just confess our need of you, um, and so just come, Lord, and minister to our hearts in this time, even as we want you to be glorified in this time. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Let's worship together. There is coming a day when no heartache shall come, no more clouds in the sky. No more tears to dim the eye. All is peace forevermore on that happy golden shore. What a day! 
glorious day that will be. Well, what a day that will be when my Jesus I shall see. When I look upon his face, the one who saved me by his grace. When he takes me by the hand and leads me to the promised land. What a day, glorious day that will be. There'll be no sorrow there. No more burden to bear, no more sickness, no pain, no more parting over there, and forever I will be with the one. What a day, glorious day that will be. What a day that will be when my Jesus I shall see. When I look upon his face, the one who saved me by his grace. When he takes me by the hand and leads me to the promised land. What a day, glorious day that will be what a day glorious day that will be okay i'm going to make an executive decision here and decide i'm going to ask you people to sit i don't know if that's right or not but you're doing it anyways thank you to buy pizza. I'm Dixie Smith and I'm sister of Dean. I'm so honored to be asked to give this eulogy. Today, I can't see here. Today we are here to honor Dean William Davidson, a dearly beloved husband and father and grandfather. On the, mar on the morning of March 27th, at the age of 76, after a long and courageous battle with cancer, Dean passed away peacefully in the Stonewall Hospital with Leona beside him. Dean's unwavering faith in the Lord was evident as he, as he daily faced the struggles of his illness. With a smile and his renowned quotes, Keep encouraged. Dean was born on January 12, 1948, in Stetler, Alberta, the second youngest of five children to Jim and Mina Davidson. His childhood and teen years were spent in Stetler. To add a bit of his days at home as a kid, he wasn't the Dean maybe that all of us know here today. <laughs> so I have a little story. I remember a story about him, and I believe a friend, and he decided to operate on my doll. And <laughs> he quite enjoyed me being very upset about that. Actually, it was Leona that reminded me of this, of this story. I mentioned that story, I mentioned that story a bit to him over and over and over again. And, uh, he said, you haven't, you haven't got over that, have you? <laughs> and I said, no, I haven't. And he says, you haven't forgiven me, have you? And I said, no. <laughs> I guess he was right. It was one of those sibling things. I always remember he liked to tease my mom, our mother, with bringing home garter snakes. And she was paranoid of garter, of garter snakes, of snakes. So she would lock herself in the basement with the lady that lived in the suite in the basement until he finally went away. He knew he wouldn't get any supper until he got rid of the snake, and he didn't like to miss a meal. 
Dean ex excelled in sports, which paved the way for his career in physical education. He committed his life to the Lord when he was 16. He attended Berean Bible College in Calgary and afterwards moved, in, moved to Banff, where he met his beloved wife, Leona. He received his Bachelor of Education from the University of Calgary and later his Master's in Education from the University of Alberta. He taught four years in Banff Elementary School. Dean and Leona welcomed their first child, Karina, in 1975. Their second daughter, Coralie, was born in 77. That same year, they moved to Cairnport. I think barely, you were barely out of the hospital. Dean served as the athletic director at Briarcrest Family of Schools for 21 years, a long time. He taught in both high school and college. He coached basketball and was a mentor for many. His house was full, his and Leona's house was full of students as all were welcome and found comfort at, in a home away from home. In 1982, their third daughter, Carlene, was born. In 1988, he was hired by the Canadian Sunday School Mission, now One Hope Mission, as a provincial director in, the Man in Manitoba, which required a move away from dear friends and family. Family, west going further east was hard to see them go. Stonewall quickly became home as they settled and began attending the New Life Church. For 11 years, Dean worked out of the CCSM, CSSM Winnipeg office, traveling around to the various camps, speaking into the lives of the camp staff, always with an encouraging word. He became vice principal at Faith Academy in 2009 and was there for three years. He also taught phys ed where he impa imparted his love for, lo for sports on the students. In 2013, after a failed attempt in retiring, Dean started driving bus for the Interlake School Division. He loved his bus kids and every day started off with an inspirational quote. Dean was very active his entire life. He loved running. I, I would venture to say at least six times a week, faithfully. We know how faithful he was in his, in his personal phys physical fitness. He played sports, hiking, backpacking, and canoeing. His time in Banff was very much enjoyed, enjoying the mountains with his hiking and canoeing with friends. He loved his camping with friends here and reading, napping, napping, and napping. And napping. <laughs> we all knew D Dean loved to nap. He always had his camera nearby, as many of us remember him for taking meal pictures. As he said, everyone is together. So last night, everyone was at together, sitting around the table, so a picture was taken. He loved his grandchildren and treasured his times with them. I know this as when he chatted, he always talked about them with pride. 37,000. To those he met, he always encouraged, whether with a verse uh, or a word of wisdom. Dean loved to connect with family on both sides, especially in the summer, summer months trekking west to visit as many family and friends as he could, and as they could. He will be forever cherished by his beloved wife, Leona, of 54 years, children, Karina and Kim, Crush, Coralie and Brian White, and Carlene and Steve Dirksen, grandchildren, Janina and Dante, Jacqueline, Anna Lee, Araya, Haley, Madeline, and Jackson, who isn't here today. His siblings, Doreen and Sid Jaycock, and Dixie, myself, and Jim, standing beside me for support, and many treasured nieces and nephews, as several of you are here today. He's predeceased by his parents, 
Jim and Mina Davidson, and brother Jack and Doug. The family would like to thank Cancer Care, Home Care, as well as the Stonewall Hospital and staff for the care Dean received. And I would like to express a huge thank you to Leona. On behalf of my sister and myself and families, for the care over the 54 years, and especially this cancer journey you have been on with Dean. You have been amazing. We know how blessed Dean knew to have you walking by his side. You are always and will be treasured with us. And we love you dearly. When you listen to that list of um, Dean Davidson's accomplishments, there's no end to it. And, and, you know, we all strive to have a legacy left behind. And, and well, Lori and I have talked about this lots of times, too. We go to different funerals. You hear the eulogy. And we say, oh, I want to be just like that person. You know, they've done so much, and, and they've... They've achieved so much, and we feel like we haven't achieved very much at all. But anyways, um, Randy Travis had sang a song at one time, and the two lines say, it's not what you take when you leave this world behind you, but rather it's what you leave behind you when you go. And Dean left lots. I feel a touch of hands so kind and tender they're leading me to paths that i must trod i'll have no fear for jesus walks beside me for i'm sheltered in the arms of god so let the storms rage high, the dark clouds rise. They don't bother me, for I'm sheltered safe within the arms of God. He walks with me, and not ever shall harm me. For I'm sheltered in the arms of God Soon I shall hear the call from heaven's portals Come home, my child, it's the last mile you must trot I'll fall asleep and wake in God's sweet heaven Sheltered safe Within the arms of God So let the storms rage high The dark clouds rise They don't bother me For I'm sheltered safe Within the arms of God he walks with me, and naught of earth shall harm me. For I'm sheltered in the arms of God. For I'm sheltered in the arms of God. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Karina. I'm 
Dean and Leona's oldest. Um, I was impressed that my Aunt Dixie managed to get through everything without tears. Um, however, I cannot guarantee the same for the three of us. Uh, so if we turn into a high octave at any time, just bear with us. We'll try and come back down. Um, so um, how does one begin to recount the life of a man who deeply impacted uh, people wherever he went? Dean William Davidson, throughout his life, Dad lived as a humble example of Christ's love for us. Dad, in his quiet way, his quiet, disciplined way, not only taught us about God, but lived it every day. Memories of him sitting in his chair every morning. With his warm... That's not helping. <laughs> <laughs> with his worn blue Bible on his lap, seeking God through his word and prayer. This was a shining example of the type of life he lived, from honoring God with his weekly day of fasting to his dedicated physical, physical activity, we witness daily his re the reward for a disciplined life. Oh, no, it's me, okay. <laughs> Dad also had a deep love. <laughs> no, that's not helping. <laughs> For those that were lost. Growing up, there were several times he brought home hitchhikers <laughs> that he'd picked up. He offered them food and a bed to sleep in and shared God's love for them. At least one of them made a commitment. I'm sorry. To Christ, and even came back for a visit. Um, when living in Cairnport, our house was always full of various groups of, of students that were generously welcomed by my mother and um, poured into by my father. Um, Dad impacted many lives with his encouragement. He loved giving and receiving notes, cards, and letters, and almost always signed, keep encouraged, with a Bible verse to go along with it. Every Christmas, my sisters and I received a personalized, heartfelt letter from our father. The words in these letters were very supportive and always indicated how proud he was of us. He encouraged us in our marriages, our parenting, and ultimately, our faith. We each treasure these letters so much and would often save them to be read in private. Um, one such verse he often included at the end of these letters was number 6, 24 through 26. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Everywhere dad went, he poured into those around him. Whether that was teaching elementary school in Banff, coaching basketball in Cairnport, traveling around to CSSM Manitoba camps, or the, to the kids he bussed here in Stonewall. Uh, one year, uh, tw 2014, uh, we were camping in Banff um, with some family on our way to a family reunion. Um, and, and Dad and I went shopping um, for some shoes, uh, which were a big passion of my father's. Um, and so we were in Banff um, shopping, and a man uh, came up to Dad, and he had remembered him from... He was, my dad had taught him uh, when he was in elementary school. Um, the, the gentleman wanted dad to know how impactful he had been in his life. Even way back in elementary school, he had said um, that if it hadn't been for dad's encouragement, he wouldn't have likely even finished school. He would have dropped out, but he felt valued by my dad. That's the kind of teacher he was. Um, in 2013, Dad had the opportunity to travel to Israel with some fellow church members. The trip was a highlight in his life, and he spoke of it often. He was able to read the Bible with new understanding and was honored to have walked where Jesus walked and to see the places where Christ had ministered. 
Through the many messages received via social media and email, there was a consistent theme. <laughs> Dad was described. <laughs> He was described as steadfast, gentle, kind, always ready with a smile, not me, and had a great sense of humor. He was an awesome encouragement to many. Here are some, mem here are some memories shared from when Dad was with CSSM. These are from people who commented on Facebook or whatever. I counted Dean as a loyal friend and mentor. He had a gift to graciously impart correction. More than once, I observed him reprimand someone and be thanked for it. <laughs> Dean Davidson was a great leader. It was by his encouragement that we stayed in the camp ministry years ago. I so appreciated Dean and his ministry with CSSM, but even more, I appreciated the man and his character and his faith. Well. <laughs> well done, Brother Dean. You've run your race, your race well. You've run your way, race well. I was privileged, here's another, I was privileged to serve with Dean when he was um, the CSSM Provincial Director. He was an excellent servant leader. He ended off so many of his letters with the two powerful words, be encouraged. Uh, this was a part of a letter that was written to Dad back in January um, from a good friend of his um, who they, he, they've known each other for uh, over 50 years. So many good memories together and so thankful for your involvement in your life. You also modeled well how to be a Christian man and have been a faithful follower of Jesus for so many years and a source of encouragement to so many people you interacted with. You also modeled well how to be a loving and caring Christian husband. So much respect from me for the life you lived. You had a significant impact on my life, Dean. I'm so thankful. I wanted to express some of these things to you while you are still with us and able to absorb some of the thanks that I have during this difficult stage. Um, this is uh, another one from our ca cousin Kathy Schultz. Um, my favorite memory of your dad was from when I was a kid and we were at a family reunion. Grandma D, my, my grandma, well her grandma, <laughs> had made a raspberry pie and your dad and I ate the whole thing. <laughs> Just that feeling of being with him, having fun and knowing you're completely loved. It's something I'll always cherish. Um, Dad was known for napping, and he would always power nap for 10 minutes after lunch when we lived in Karenport, asking someone to set the dinger. <laughs> Even our cousin Linda, who attended Karenport at school, or school at Karenport, shared a memory of this. She was envious of Dad's ability to nap anywhere. She remembers him napping in his chair after dinner. Um, and this was from... Um, my, my brother-in-law, he, he married uh, my husband's sister um, and was also at Cairnport um, at one time. Um, so he says, loved your dad first as a coach, a teacher, mentor, and then, to my surprise, becoming family and my friend. He taught me that things worth doing take hard work and discipline, but mostly a complete reliance on Jesus. I would not have made it this far in my ministry without the lessons he taught me at the very beginning, and I know that for certain. My favorite memory of your dad, I love this story, was a basketball game that, we that he played with us. I'm not sure who we were playing or why he suited up for the day, but it was so fun. I'm sure he must have been in his 50s at the time, which he was. He took off his shirt and put on a jersey, and he was absolutely jacked. <laughs> Every guy in the locker room's jaw dropped to the floor. Not only that, but he took it to the other team, being our best rebounder for the game. 
In our mourning, we need to rejoice that dad is, has stood before the Lord and heard the words, well done, good and faithful servant. Stand, please. Well, except the family. Family can stay seated. I love you, Lord, for your mercy never fails me all my days. I've been held, held in your hands, sorry, from the moment that I wake up. Till I lay my head, I sing of the goodness of God. All my life, you have been faithful. All my life, you have been so, so good. Every breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness of God. I love your voice. You have led me through the fire. Darkest night, you are close like no other. I've known you as a father, I've known you as a friend, have lived in the goodness of God. All my life you have been faithful, all my life you have been so, so every breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness of God. All my life, you have been faithful. All my life, you have been so, so the goodness of God. I will sing of the goodness of God. Thank you. You may be seated. Amen. Thanks, Robert. Thank you, family, for sharing uh, that testimony from many about the impact that Dean uh, has made, and we all have our own stories like that, and I know I, I certainly do. Um, when I moved to Stonewall uh, and into this church about seven and a half years ago, uh, it became very clear very quickly that, that Dean was a really special person, and Leona was special too, and is special. Quite, quite a dynamic couple, and uh, he came very dear to me, and I think it was just around the time I came that um, he was diagnosed with cancer. I, I remember very distinctly that thought that came to me early on that, uh, boy, it's going to be a sad day if he dies. Like, you know that feeling? Like, you know that we're all going to die? But there's some people that are just really dear, and they mean so much to you, and they, you know they mean so much to, around, or to people around you. You kind of think that way. You're like, man, that's going to be really sad. That's going to be a loss. 
And Dean was just one of those guys where you just knew when that day would come, and we, knew, we know that day comes for all of us, um, was going to be a hard day. And so last Wednesday, I got the call from Leona that that day had come. Um, and she asked if I would speak at the service here. And in that moment, of course, I knew, I knew uh, what that key word was going to be in the service. Any idea? What's that? Oh, okay, so he said that to you too? Okay, here all along, like honestly, I kind of feel a little salty because I thought I was special. Um, man, I must be his favorite because every email ends with be encouraged or keep encouraged. And, and the way he would say that to me, I must be a very special person. And now I've come to realize, no, he just was that way to everybody. But I mean, I, I, I can't think of Dean without also thinking of the word encouragement. Those two, they just go together, uh, hand in glove. And so, um, you know, here's a picture of just one of the last emails that Dean would have sent to me, um, wanting just to share an update on his health situation. And then at the end of, of that email, um, he wrote what he always wrote at the end of an email to me and, and maybe to you, the words, um, keep encouraged. And he didn't just write them, but he would verbally speak those um, and those were often the final words of any conversation you had with Dean, and, and you already know that, many of you. Um, sometimes when he uh, wanted to speak encouragement to my life, it was to get more exercise. <laughs> he had this keen awareness of my physique, which was... He had this sense when I had put on a little bit of weight, and... Uh, I can still think of when I was getting a little doughy. Um, I, I can still recall a couple conversations by the photocopier in the office area where he said, like, uh, how are you taking care of your body, Rusty? And uh, I said, none of your business, Dean. Go away. Um, but uh, but he, he'd had genuine concern for, um, you know, the physical well-being of me and others. And, of course, we know that was really important to him. He loved to exercise and to be healthy, you know, to have a good diet, to be active. And, uh, and so he would, you'd always find Dean running in town. It wasn't actually that long ago. It was when he was quite ill, and it was a very rainy day. I remember driving down that street, their street, and seeing this tall, thin person in a rain poncho shuffling down the street. And I thought, who's this crazy person? And I drive by, oh, it's Dean. Yeah, at that point, he wasn't running. He was more shuffling, but there he was. It wasn't, nothing was going to stop him. And um, so uh, he knew that uh, to be human was to be body, mind, and spirit, and he wanted to take care of the whole person. So sometimes his encouragement was, was about exercise. Um, mostly it, it was spiritual encouragement. You know, he, he really wanted to point me and he wanted to point others to the love and the care of God for them. You know, the word encourage, it, it's, um, it, it seems kind of like a bit of a light, fluffy, flowery word, but when you think of it, what is it? It's, it the word courage is in there. To, to help someone find courage. And courage is a strong word, right? Courage is what you need when you're going through tough things. And so he loved to come alongside people and just kind of try to fuel them try to re-up kind of up their courage by pointing them to the truth of God, to the love and the care of God displayed in the gospel of Jesus Christ to help them keep going. And he was a real encourager. That was his gift. And then that email, um, almost every email ended after he said keep encouraged with uh, the same Bible verses. It was Ephesians chapter 3, verses 14 to 21, which at the very end of the service will actually read, and that will be our benediction. But he would close each email by referencing Ephesians 3, 14 to 21, which is a prayer. It was Paul's prayer for the church, but I think it was also Dean's prayer for us, right? And a part of that prayer there, uh, those verses was, um, I, I pray that you might have power as God's holy people to grasp how high and wide and long and deep is the love of God for you. Because apparently, the, to, to really have some sense to comprehend the greatness of God's love, you would need help to really see how big God's love is towards us. And he had a passion in his life to help people 
know, to really know the love of God. Uh, and so he took a great interest in people and had a great love for people, all people. And, and so he was a real family man. And it became very clear in my conversations with him right from the beginning into these final months how, how deeply he and Leona cared for their family. Family was first, right? And I was just always so impressed by the way that he prioritized family and by the way he spoke of his family. And he just loved you guys a lot. You're very blessed. You're very blessed. Not everybody gets a great dad. There's a lot of people in this room didn't get a great dad or a great husband or a great grandpa. Uh, he loved his family dearly and always spoke so, so highly and proudly of them. I mean, that just really stuck out to me for sure. He particularly had a passion for youth and kids, which, which led him, I think, to Briarcrest to invest in young people, led him into the camp ministry, right, to, to, to invest in the discipling of, 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 of children that they might know the love of God for them and have their lives changed by that love. Uh, and then when he retired, um, I mean, he just continued that passion as a bus driver here in this community and uh, just really impacted the lives of, of uh, many uh, kids. I mean, those kids are now adults. And so Leona had showed me, here's a picture of it. Leona had showed me um, a little note. I've crossed out the name for privacy's sake, but a little note that a, that a child handed um, or a teenager handed to Dean not that long ago. Thank you for being the best bus driver throughout my four years of high school and getting me to school safely each day, I will miss hearing the quote of the day each morning. In fact, just, uh, just a day after he had passed away, before it was really known by, to the public what had happened, um, he received an email from the bus driving group inviting him to the AGM, which would happen last night, where he would be honored for his service. And uh, the family had replied, said, well, I'm sorry to inform you, yesterday he passed away. But uh, I have no doubt that yesterday when the bus drivers gathered, they honored him anyway. He believed his encounters with people were divine appointments. And this kind of blew me away a few days ago when I sat with Leona in their home. Um, she showed me a piece of paper she had discovered uh, somewhere in his, in his things about a recent trip. And I, I guess it was a little hush-hush because he wasn't doing so great in February, but they really wanted to go to... Phoenix to visit family and, and just have a great trip. And so um, they, they, they took this trip. It was a little risky because didn't know, you know, how his health was going to hold up. And they took this trip to, to Arizona. And um, after that trip, um, she discovered this piece of paper. And maybe it was after his passing, but um, it had a bunch of notes scribbled on it. At the top, it said, Winnipeg Airport, Rod and Janice. And then a whole bunch of details about Rod and Janice's life about their health situation and what he did for work. And then down the page, it said, flight to Calgary, Darren Clausen from Morden was the guy that he sat beside. And then details of Darren's life. And then down the page, it said, Calgary Airport, Marilyn Hogarth, with a bunch of details of Marilyn's life. And then further down, flight to Phoenix, Ben and Sadie, with a whole bunch of, and, and what you realize is this guy was talking to people the whole trip. Everyone, and you and I, what do we do? We, we put on the earplugs, don't bother me, don't talk to me. And uh, every opportunity he had, he wanted to get to know people. And why did he write all of these details? Why? Why, Leona? Because he wanted to pray for them later. He wanted to remember what was going on in their life. These strangers, he would never, you know, he'd never meet them again but he just had this deep interest in, in them and wanted them to know the love of God. So he would encourage him in that conversation and then he would pray for them later because Dean loved to talk to people about God and, he, and uh, to talk to God about people. And so I also took a, a picture of this uh, page that, that Leona showed me. Um, it's a little weathered and I don't know if it's, I don't, I didn't, put, for those of you that are on the live stream, I didn't put this on there for posterity because there might be like really sensitive information on this piece of paper. I didn't give it a good look. You, some of you in the room, your names are on this piece of paper, right? If you, if you hunt hard enough. In fact, do you see about one third of the way down past hitchhikers, Dan Peters, Mark Simpson. I mean, you were just talking about hitchhikers. And I noticed that he's, he's recording the names of past hitchhikers 
so that he can continue to pray for these people. And it, have, and it has dates there, 80s and the 90s. That's why it's so weathered, because he kept adding to it and dates, and uh, he used it over, over years and decades, actually. What an illustration of the, of, of, of the heart that he had for people. He wanted people to know the love of God. And so we thank God for him and for his encouragement and for his prayers for us. But he's gone from us. There's not, there's not going to be another email that ends with keep encouraged. So is there reason to be encouraged today? Or has the encouragement ended with the passing of Dean? So there's these verses in this book in the New Testament called 1 Thessalonians, the words of Paul to the church. And for those of you that were at uh, the burial earlier today, uh, his body was laid to rest here in the Stonewall Cemetery earlier today. These words were read at that time too. But Paul, Paul, Paul closes by saying in 1 Thessalonians 4.18, he says, therefore encourage one another with these words. Encourage one another with these words. And with what words are we called to encourage one another? Well, if we, if we back up a little bit, this is what he says, starting in verse 13. Brothers and sisters, we do not want you to be uninformed about those who sleep in death so that you don't grieve like the rest of mankind who have no hope. Because you're not people, if you know Christ, you're not people who don't have hope. You are people who have hope. Yeah, you're going to grieve. Yeah, you're going to lose people. You're going to be sad. It's going to be hard. But you're not going to do it without hope. For we believe that Jesus died and that he rose again. And so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him, those who have died. According to the Lord's word, we tell you that we who are still alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will certainly not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command and with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. And after that, we who are still alive at Christ's coming again, and are left, we will be caught up together with those who have gone on before with the Lord to meet Him, and so we will dwell with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. Where is encouragement found? It's, the, it, it, it's this great truth that Jesus Christ died on the cross and that He rose again. And why did He do that? Well, I mean, it's summarized very simply in John three sixteen: For God so loved the world that He gave His only Son that whoever would believe in him, in Jesus Christ, would not perish, but would have eternal life. Jesus came, Jesus died, Jesus rose from the dead to reconcile Dean and you and I and a, and a broken world to God. He came to bring us back into a right relationship with God and restore to us the life, the eternal life that God created us to have. That's the gospel. That's the good news that Jesus has done absolutely everything that is necessary to have a right relationship with God. Everything that is necessary to know that we have life eternal, that our, son, uh, that our sins are forgiven. And at the age of 16, Dean, he heard that simple yet life-changing life-giving message of what Jesus had done. And he put his trust in Jesus. He repented of his sin, and he put his trust in Jesus Christ for his life, for his forgiveness. And that's where he found his hope. You know, we often think that repentance just means saying you're sorry to God for all the bad things you do. That, that's only a small part of it. Repentance is way bigger than that. It's a total reorientation of the way that we relate to God. It's a way of saying, I no longer am trusting in my own efforts to try to be a good person, to be good enough for God, so that maybe if I just do enough, I will be acceptable to Him. Repentance is saying, I'm turning from trying to relate to God that way, from trying to earn God's favor, to be good enough. And, and, and now I'm, I'm actually putting my full trust, not in anything I have done, I'm putting my trust in what Jesus has done for me and I can't add anything to it and I can't take anything away from it. He has done it all. All that God asks us to do is not try harder, not be good, not do better, but believe, 
Trust in Jesus. He has done everything necessary to give you life. And that's a life you receive by faith in Him. A simple yet life-changing message. And Dean did that at 16. He believed in Jesus. And he put his trust not in himself but in Christ. And that's what made him who he was. That's what made him special. You know, most people think, and if I were to ask people on the streets of Stonewall, you know, if, if, if there's a good God who has a, a good place um, for people, um, who would get there? Who would it be for? And, and most people would say, well, it would be good people. If, God has a, if a good God has a good place, it would be for, for good people. But, but what is good? Do you know the perfect definition of what is good? And how good do you have to be? 80%? And how would you, even if you knew it was 80%, how would you ever know where you stood in any given day? There's not a lot of hope there. There's anxiety. There's fear. The good news is that God gives us something so much better. For God so loved the world that he gave his son, that whoever believes in him would not perish, but would have everlasting life. Jesus has done it all. All that is left for us to do is to receive. And when we do that, when we repent of our sins and put our full faith not in ourselves, but in Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we live a life of confidence. We know that when death comes to us, all that we have on the other side of that is life. And so when Dean's body was lowered into the ground earlier today, it was done so in hope and encouragement. That was not the end. To the untrained eye, what that looked like was death, but to the person really in the know, it was not death, it was birth. It was birth into a life that was something so much better, so much greater, a gift that God had given to him because of his faith. And he was ready. And if you spoke with Dean you know, over these last weeks, months, you knew he was ready. And when we found out a number of weeks ago that there was no more treatment left, it was now just a matter of time, I came and I sat in the home with, with Dean and Leona. And I, I, again, I'm like, who's, who's pastoring who here? right? Aren't, aren't I supposed to say to you, be encouraged when I walk out? He's rusty, be encouraged. And um, I just, he just had this strength and this confidence that wasn't in himself. It's just that he knew Christ. He knew hope. And so there is encouragement in those words that we know right now Dean is experiencing the fullness of life with his Savior. But there's more encouragement in these words than that. The encouragement is that we too can join him and be united with him and dwell with the Lord forever. God offers that life to everyone who will receive it, everyone who will believe in his son, everyone who will turn to try to earn their way or be good enough for God and to let that go and to turn and to come to God the only way that he has made by putting trust in his son, Jesus Christ, and in his death and his resurrection God offers that life to every single person who will receive us, who will receive that life through faith. You know, there's a verse um, in a little Old Testament book called Ecclesiastes, which says, it's better to go to a house of mourning than to a house of feasting, for death is the destiny of us all, and the living should take that to heart. And it seems a little bit morbid. It's better to go to a funeral than to a wedding feast. Because death is the destiny of us all. We're all going to die. And it's better to think about that before you're dead. It's good. It's good to think about that while you're living, to really consider the big questions. Where do I find my life? Where do I find my hope? In what am I trusting today? The encouragement is that if we put our trust in Jesus Christ as Dean did, we can have life eternal. God has made a way. And we can dwell together with Him in the presence of God 
forever and ever and ever. So be encouraged, family. Be encouraged, church. Be encouraged, friends. If you have put your faith in Christ and have received that gift of that relationship with God, we can look forward to a grand reunion. Isn't that great? This isn't the end. What was it the Churchill said? Death is not the end. It is not perhaps even the beginning of the end, but perhaps it's the end of the beginning. So, a few weeks ago, Dean wrote um, out the lyrics of a song that many of you will know well. The name of the song is I Can Only Imagine. And in a moment, uh, Dean's granddaughter, Annalie, is going to come to the piano and she's going to play this song. Uh, you're going to see the words up on the screen. But Dean, here's a photocopy of, of what he wrote. He, he wrote it out and uh, a few weeks ago, he gave it to the people in his life group. Um, which is a small group here, people from the church that meet uh, on a regular basis in their home. And uh, I, I do want to say, because I, I was asked to share this by, 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 the, by Dean and his kids, um, for those of you who are in their life group, there's some of you here in the room, Jim and Barb Campbell, Robert and Lori Hyde, um, Ron and Heather Koss, Al Miller, Greg, uh, w- Wayne McMaster, um, Jelly and, and Eleanor Epp, Henry Both, Al Miller, yeah, um, Dean has been there for you guys over the years in some pretty significant ways. And you have been there for Dean and you have been there for Leona and we know you'll continue to be there for Leona. So I, for those of you that are in that group that's really close to them, just a big thank you. The family wants to pass on to you for the care you have and the care that you will continue to give. So I, I, I just want to read um, the first verse of this song, I Can Only Imagine, and... Um, I'll pray, and then Annalise, she's going to play this on the piano. I can only imagine what it will be like when I walk by your side, talking to God. I can only imagine what my eyes will see when your face is before me. I can only imagine, surrounded by your glory, what will my heart feel? Will I dance for you, Jesus, or in awe of you be still? Will I stand in your presence, or to my knees will I fall? Will I sing hallelujah, or will I be able to speak at all? I can only imagine. I can only imagine. And he doesn't have to imagine anymore. His faith has become sight. And so let me just close my, my message with the words he would close every conversation with. Keep encouraged. There's reason to keep encouraged. Let's pray. Father God, we, we just want to express, God, um, our thankfulness to you uh, because Dean was, um, was your gift to us. You're the one that conceived of him in your mind. You're the one that knit him together in his mother's womb. You're the one that gave him life, um, physical life, and, and you're the one that gave him spiritual life. You're the one that made him special, Lord. So we just thank you, God, for his life, just the way that he has made a difference in the lives of everybody that's in this room and so many more, the way that he has left a godly example, Lord, for us to follow. And I just pray that his life, as we go forward in the, in the, in the months and the years to come, would just be a constant reminder and, and encouragement to the family and to those of us who knew him um, of what uh, uh, a life looks like lived um, following you, Lord. Um, yeah, might, might he continue to encourage us in his example? Or do we know that his, his goal was just to point us to you, um, the one that he loved, the one who had given him life, the one who gives him life right now. He's in your presence and he's enjoying you. Um, And so we thank you, God, that in your love for him, in your love for the world, in your love for us, you sent your son. 
We thank you, God, that you bore his sin and our sin on the cross. And in rising from the dead, you overcame sin and death and everything that, that stood between us and you. And God, you have made a way. You have made a way forward through the struggles of life. You have made for, a way forward through death into life eternal through your son, Jesus. We just thank you, God, for all that you have done and continue to do for him and for us. So, Lord, we just entrust his, his spirit into your care. And, Lord, for, for us here who are left, um, Lord, he's not here anymore to keep saying, keep encouraged, be encouraged. Lord, but we have you, and we will always have you. So, Lord, would you just keep encouraging our hearts, Lord, and giving us the power to know how high and wide and long and deep is your love for us, Lord. And um, might we leave here ready just to love you and to love others with all our heart. This we pray in Jesus' name, amen. Let's listen. Thanks, Annalie. That was beautifully done. The, yeah. I'm sure Grandpa's up there too. 
Ms. Clapham. We'd be very proud of you. Okay, can I invite you to stand? Um, in a moment here, the family, uh, after I just lead us in a benediction, the family will exit, and you guys, a family, if you want to head back to the family room or be out there, or you can go wherever you want to go. And uh, once the family's left, you're invited to stay uh, just for a time of fellowship, and uh, there's lots of food out there, so you're encouraged to just to stay and to enjoy one another, take the opportunity to offer out words of love and, and care to the family, and, and sh maybe share some, some memories of Dean um, as well. Uh, so I think it would be appropriate if we close the service in celebration of his life with those words that uh, he would always use to close his emails. Ephesians chapter 3, verses 14 to 21. For this reason I kneel before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power, together with all the Lord's holy people, to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ and to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we can ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. And together we say, Amen. Amen. Okay, family, we'll let you go.